Hello, I'm going to speak to you from the polytunnel today. Ooh. Looks quite nice, but believe me, it was throwing it down with rain about 10 minutes ago. And it's the sort of weather where anything can happen. Anyway, it's all very pleasant in here, I think. Oh, yes, look, sunshine. So this video is about, I'll call it Derived Energy, who is a YouTuber who I don't think I had any direct dealings with, but he was part of the community and he is dead. That is one thing I think we can be sure of. He is dead. Whether he committed suicide or was killed is still open question, but he is definitely dead and it throws up some interesting questions and to my mind highlights why so many people in the past have been happy with this whole God thing because it is a good thing to fall back on when you really don't know what to say. Because derived energy was, I believe, an antinatalist, as in he don't, didn't believe that people should have children, um, I, I can't actually go on and say why he believed that, because I haven't seen any of his videos. But it could have been because some people are born and do what is generally termed a lot of suffering throughout their life. And the argument goes, therefore, it is cruelly inappropriate to drag somebody into being alive to suffer through a life which as I stress many times all of us never had any choice in it we were just dragged into life uh, there's no um, it, it's something that is so obvious but is never really thought about that we just don't get any choice in the matter we are just thrust into the world with the parents we have in the socio-economic conditions that they happen to live in and then we happen to live in are grown up in go to school in and then have to go out and work throughout our lives maybe get to retirement and then die and the antinatalist or the antinatalists say this is cruel and unusual punishment for anybody and the obviously countervailing argument is that so many people really enjoy their lives so much i've noted quite a few comments on the videos that have been made about the death of derived energy and even um, the modern advanced people who have been arguing, debating the antinatalist position for such a long time are still stuck for words about what to say about somebody being dead. Some have been brutally blunt and said, good, that's what he wanted, now he won't have to suffer anymore. Not in a a brutally nasty way but just in a blunt way that is what he wanted he did not want to suffer anymore and now he is not suffering anymore and this takes us to the other thought that obviously crops up in most people's minds and has been representative of many comments that have been laid down which can be summed up in yeah but what a fucked up way to die. 
in an Indonesian drug rehabilitation center um, with your head under water in some basin of unknown size and description, but some form of drowning. And this is understandable, but I don't think it actually makes any sense. Because it kind of infers, indirectly, in a wishy-washy way, that he will live on afterwards and look back on his life and think, well, that was a fucked up way to die. Or, in his afterlife, he will be affected because dying in a fucked up way was the last thing he can remember being or doing in this life. And all of them, obviously, are nonsense. But it's a perfectly natural thing to imagine. When it comes down to it in all reality, the last two minutes, two days or two weeks of your life are of no importance than any two minutes, two days or two weeks of your life. In fact, it could be said with some degree of rationality that they are of lesser importance because let's say for instance you are tortured in Abu Ghraib or Guantanamo Bay doing this drowning thing that at least one of these ragtops were subjected to for 180 times I think that could have a profound psychological effect on the rest of your life as opposed to drowning once and then that being the end. And this is in a way part of what I'm sure derived energy would have said that life is a fucked up affair all the punishments and slings and arrows and um, pains and suffering that we do experience are not short-term things that you get over very quickly. They all leave emotional scars. They're much longer-lasting affairs than small-term joys or even ecstasies. Ecstasy is a very short-lived thing and I, besides developing into a carrot that is dangled just out of reach ahead of you, sometimes these ecstasies just drag you forward and you never actually experience them again. All ecstasies turn into are tempting treats that drive you forward relentlessly and futilely and each driving forward to an intelligent person that can see what they're doing is an insult to their intelligence because they really know that they're not going to achieve that level of delight that they had but they go on trying whereas a bad thing that di directly happens, it just takes you straight in the gut and stays with you. Life, basically, is not a bowl of cherries. It's not a wonderful thing. And it is very hard to argue against the antinatalist uh, argument. They're, they're, that they put forward. I would not probably argue it from the position of people being thrust into this world and generally do a lot of suffering. I wouldn't do it from the suffering angle, probably. I would probably attack it from the futility aspect of it, as in we are thrust into this world to do absolutely nothing at all that could possibly amount to anything. 
I could say a hill of beans, but you know what I mean by nothing. Absolutely nothing that you, I or anybody can do amounts to anything that's going to amount to anything. Nothing is really of importance. I'd attack it from that angle, throwing um, people into a world that they feel that they have got to do things, but any intelligent person knows that whatever they are doing is just filling up time and space until they do as derived energy do, did, and gets the hell out of here, be it voluntarily or by the system just grinding on and going on to other people, leaving you behind. Anyway, it's, I'll call that the end, but highlight the fact that even people that have thought about this a lot really struggle for words to describe the life and death of what we are meant to be human beings. We are so scared of talking about it that we really don't have the words to talk about it rationally and properly and sensibly as adult human beings. We resort to leftover religious nonsense and basically bad thinking. And this is one thing that YouTube can, I think, really help with, that we are not constrained by the outside world. We can talk about these things in a new and open way and at least make the people that won't talk about it in an open and reasonable way realize that they are like generations hundreds of generations before us have done they are just running away from talking about life which if anything is worth talking about must be the most important thing to talk about that human beings have got to talk about life and death and what happens between those two poles I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching on this now lovely day.